from God who dwelt among us in Christ Jesus. Amen. Welcome to this first Sunday of 2021. Are you ready for a new year? Yes. <laughs> are we sounding yes? I heard it, yes. We are so ready to say goodbye to 2020 and all of the challenges of that year. Our gospel reading today reminds us of the challenging times that Jesus was born into. King Herod had sent a decree to kill all males born around Bethlehem who were two years or younger. An angel came to Joseph to tell him to take his family to safety to Egypt. And so it is in Egypt that they stayed until another angel came to Joseph in a dream, telling the family that it was safe to move to Nazareth. Can you imagine giving birth to a child, a male child, only to hear that the king was had desired to massacre infants? This is a heart-wrenching part of the story that is told by the gospel writer Matthew. But it is helpful for us to hear that Jesus was not born into a world of peace, but came to bring peace. That Jesus was not born into a world of silence, as in Silent Night, but one that was crying in pain and in grief and in disbelief of the times. If we had the opportunity to sit down to talk with Joseph and Mary, I think they would be able to relate to our troubling times and we would be able to relate to theirs as well. Listen to a Christmas card that I received this year. It's a card that was written by a Lutheran pastor, Reverend Stan Meyer. This is what he wrote. May we not remember 2020 as the year we wandered endlessly among the shards of chaos and catastrophe but as the year we looked in the mirror of our life and saw the courage to meet our challenges, the determination to answer our distress, and the spirit of care and compassion to address the suffering in our community. May this year remind us that we are all part of the one holy human family that longs for peace to make its home in our hearts. What beautiful words to frame this past year. And words do have power to shape and form our attitudes and our behavior. We are, we are bombarded by words all the time. The words of our carols, the words of our Christmas card readings, the words on our shopping list, the words of the news, and the list goes on. In the midst of so many words, we make a bold statement in this Christmas season that the God who has been from the beginning, the God who first created and continues to create, is the very God dwelt among us. Last Sunday, on the first Sunday in the Christmas season, the Gospel lesson included these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. When it comes to God, Word equals action. I say that because uh, you probably have learned to be a bit skeptical when an auto mechanic or a repairman promises to have work finished by a certain day, or when you think a package is going to arrive before Christmas, like promised. When someone volunteers to show up to help, you just kind of wonder, does that person's word mean what they're saying? But God's word equals action. Think about the creation story found in the first chapter of Genesis. In the beginning, God. God said the word and the world came to be. 
God said, let there be light, and it was so. God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, and it was so. Now, when I was in seminary, I went to Israel, and while in Jerusalem, I decided I would buy a nativity set. And so I went to look at this one store that sold so many of them. But every set had an infant Jesus with the face of a very old man with deep-seated wrinkles. And I had wanted a nice little baby face on Jesus, you would think, you know. But um, I asked the clerk the reason behind all the old men faces on baby Jesus. The clerk smiled and said, Jesus was and has been from the beginning. It is our way to show the infinite wisdom of Jesus. Now, I kind of think that was a sales pitch. You know, but theologically, I, I, I liked it. I, I, I agree with that. Today, as we gather to affirm that statement, we say that the God who has been from the beginning with ultimate, infinite wisdom chose to dwell among us. The more precise translation is God dwelt among us, God tabernacled among us, God pitched a tent among us. Now you might not know that I love to camp and I have, especially in my younger days, I would love to pitch a tent and have taken many youth camping over the years. And when you camp, you learn a lot about people, sometimes a little bit too much. Um, but it is an opportunity to build community. So one of my favorite stories to illustrate uh, what we learn about ourselves comes from a camping trip when I took a, a youth church group hiking in the Bighorn Mountains. And it was their first experience with backpacking. Every summer they used to go to the Boundary Waters of Canoe and they decided to try something different. Not knowing how difficult it is to carry your sleeping bag and your food on your back to hike up the mountains. On the very first day, within like the first hour, we had stopped for a little food break, and one of the girls came to me and said, she asked me this question, what would she have to do that I would punish her and make her stay on the bus for the entire week? <laughs> Listen again to that. 
because of his boundless love, Jesus became what we are, that he might make us to be what he is. That he might make us better people. Unfortunately, as we go through struggles and difficulties, as we dig deeper in who we are, as we learn to turn to God in new ways, God creates a new being in us, a new creation as well. Now on Christmas Eve, I was with you, and the sanctuary and the music were beautiful. And we reflected on that word, Emmanuel, God with us. No matter what, God is with us in our troubles, in our imperfections, Emmanuel. Now after the sermon, I sat down and on that chair over there and I was adjusting my glasses and my face masks and this earpiece and my earrings and, and they all get, this is, a, this is kind of a challenge to get all these, be in the right place. And I felt something touch me and I realized my clerical collar had come unbuttoned. And if you look at my collar and this collar, it's a mini miracle that how that thing got out from underneath, unbuttoned, and they both were sticking out. <laughs> so I buttoned it within about two seconds. It's a pretty easy thing. Now, in over 30 years of preaching, I've never had this uh, wardrobe malfunction like that. I thought only in 2020. And I kind of think, you know, that's kind of what I was preaching on. Despite our imperfections, despite the distractions, that God is with us, even with this little collar. And as I looked at it, you none of you let on that these things were sticking out. Nobody said anything to me after the worship service. And I thought, maybe it just happened when I said that. You know, maybe, maybe y'all don't know me well enough, you could have said something. And so I am. Um, Christmas, I thought, oh, I'm going to peek. I'm going to go back and, and look at that video. And at the end of the sermon, sermon yep, middle of the sermon, yep. I still don't know quite when it popped out. Now, um, I thought what a beautiful illustration for my sermon, an unplanned, teachable moment. But then I got a phone call a couple days later, not from one of your members, but a relative of one of your members who said the service went well, everything went fine. Yes, this, the relatives uh, had noticed this popping out, you know, and said, you know, it's really okay because those white flaps look like angel wings. Is that about as gracious as it could be? <laughs> Not, doesn't she know how to put that band on her neck? But they look like angels' wings. And I thought, you know, I'm so glad that I have a chance to preach here again. Because Trinity, that is grace. That is putting the best slant on a situation. Using words to lift up, to build up, and not to tear down. And I hope as your new priest comes this week, you will continue to extend words that are that gracious, that are so warm, that put the best slant on it. For that's what we need in 2021, rather for us to look at each other as enemies and the divisions and the differences, but how is it that we find a common ground, a shared humanity, for everyone here is going through challenges, let alone the people who wait on us at the grocery store, who deliver our mail, who pick up our groceries, who allow us to live our lives. It's time we take a step back and really learn the ways that we can be gracious and understanding and kind and encouraging to each other. And so that prompts me to share another word. If Emmanuel was the word for Christmas Eve, the word for today is adiaphora. It's 
a word that's often used versus essential. Adiaphora are those things that are not mandated nor prohibited. In church and theology, neither mandated by Christ nor prohibited. So that means stoles and paths, flowers and candles, that's all adiaphora. It's those things that help us perhaps to worship, help us to, to follow Christ, but they're not prohibited nor mandated. That's a lot of stuff that we often disagree about, is the audiophora. The things that we get caught up in our lives that fuss around about and stress over, it's the non-essentials. And hopefully 2020 has reminded us of what is important. For in 2020, it has been like a mirror that is put before us. We've had an opportunity to learn more about ourselves, of what we hate while being in isolation, or perhaps what we love about that, what we've missed, and who we have missed. Now, there's one thing also about camping, and I've pitched a tent long enough and many nights to know there are some nights that are darker than others, when there are no, no, no stars. Some days seem so bleak, with the fear of flash flood and destruction seem overwhelming. And some storms are so severe, it feels like the thunder and the lightning gets right inside the tent, or in our houses, or in our bodies. It's critical to know that we are not alone, that God in Christ Jesus has pitched a tent in the midst of the suffering and the storms of life. That we are not alone in what we experience. For God chose to come and to dwell among us as one of us, as the one to bring light into our darkness, the one who brings life in the midst of death, the one who brings love in the midst of hatred. The Gospel writer John reminds us, What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the Word became flesh, and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Think about those words full of grace and truth. Truth, not the appearance, but the reality. The one whose life depends on. The one who you and I can look at. Now, there is a story of a little boy who was afraid one night that the thunderstorms were all around him. And his mother came into his room and sat with him until the storm was over. And then she started to leave. Oh, don't go, he pleaded. So scared. Now his mother assured him that God was with them. To which he responded, Oh, I know that, but I need someone with skin on. <laughs> God's word today proclaims the good word that in Christ God chose to do something dramatically unique. After years of speaking to the prophets, God finally said, I'll show up. I'll put skin on my love and my presence with and among you. For in Jesus Christ, God chose to pitch a tent in the midst of the darkness of our lives so that we might have life and light. I join Apostle Paul in his words to the Ephesians for you and for your congregation on this week that you prepare to receive your new priests. Apostle Paul writes, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the 
riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. Thanks be to God. Amen.